Chrome OS multitask. MPV lives long and prospers. Intel done goofed again. And System76 takes Bitcoin? I don't know. That sounds frightening, but don't worry, because this is another great day for Linux, yeah. everyone. And welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we're going to sit back, relax, and take that midweek break so we can discuss some of the cool things we found going on in the world of Linux. And if we say Linux three more times, we get a bite-sized Snickers, man, I'm telling you. That's how it works. Um, I don't make the rules. I just blindly enforce them. Joined every week by Pedro Mateus. What's up, Hello. man? What's going on? Heard you get some... Uh... Uh, actually, well, I got a very expensive power bill on account of heaters. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a little cold there. A little bit. Uh, there were a couple of, well, weeks of minus temperatures just day in and day in. So uh, we turned on the heaters a lot over this past couple of months. And when the bill came in, it's like. <gasps> yeah, we were joking about that before we went live. Um, my ancient house, which A, is way too big for me, but also not insulated whatsoever because it was made in the dark ages. I, I just looked at my thermostat and I had like $100. But on that, um, uh, you know, yeah. the uh, one thing I was looking for is. Because you know, we all have mobile devices and we have capacitive touchscreens, right? So mm -hmm. I wanted a pair of gloves because one thing that irritates me is I don't mind putting on, you know, like murder rating gloves, right? Mm -hmm. Just having those on. But then there'll be a notification on one of the tablets around the house or something. Then you got to take it and it's just more trouble than it's worth. I never keep them on. And so I just don't wear gloves. Mm -hmm. I went to find, uh, you know, the capacitive ones yeah with the fingertips and cheapest pair i found a were like 35 quid b uh were like massive they didn't fit me right so i went for option c pedro <laughs> do you know what option c is yeah what is it latex gloves no man i, I got these right these these, okay. these were a buck 50 for two pair okay so, <laughs> so think of these more like mittens however I, uh, okay. i've carefully modified here, I want to make sure everyone can see this. I have carefully modified it. Can you tell? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you using a pair of science scissors. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there we go. Money. Not exactly safe. hobo gloves, but almost. <laughs> oh, almost hobo light. We, we do things on a budget here at um, <laughs> Linux Weekly Daily <laughs> Wednesdays. All right. Uh, let's get right into this business with SoftMaker for Linux. Uh, what is it, man? It's a Microsoft mm -hmm. Office. Man, it, it seems like I've heard this before, Pedro. I don't know if I believe it. Oh, yeah. Like three or... or 700 times. Well, uh, this is a new one. It's SoftMaker Office, and the very first line of the article proper is SoftMaker Office could be a first-class professional strength replacement for Microsoft Office on the Linux desktop. Yeah, that means nothing. It, it's a sentence that means absolutely nothing, but they do say, oh, it's got like the stupid ribbon that Microsoft introduced that everyone hates, but they basically have come to grips with because they don't have a chance. Uh, you could also have the regular layout and a couple of more. Uh, they claim that it's fully compatible with um, Microsoft Office. I'm pretty sure if I threw some of the spreadsheets I handle at work at this particular office suite, it would uh, it wouldn't work, or the formatting would be all skewed as usual. <laughs> you see, you say that, and you know, for, first thought, just run a word perfect, just like a normal person. Some some of you are like, oh yeah, remember Red Hat five point two? It was on the extra CD. Um, fully compatible or one hundred percent compatible? Do do they make that bold claim? They say it's fully compatible. Fully compatible. Okay, because I was going to take the Pepsi mm -hmm. challenge. In fact, I tried, ladies and gentlemen. I did. I went to the <laughs> web zone. I downloaded it. Clearly said uh, use the beta trial. It doesn't nope until later this month. Downloaded it. It wanted a registration key. It's, you don't provide me an option to get a registration key to test your... Un I just wanted to see if it would open yeah. a Google Docs. I exported our show notes. It's sitting in my downloads folder. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, you know what? I, I think uh, I'm just going to stick with the dozen or so other uh, non-DRM encumbered uh, solutions out there. Yeah, also 70 bucks for the base license. Okay, admittedly, it's the one-time fee and you get, I think it's up to, uh, up to five boxes uh, running SoftMaker Office, but that's still a bit steep, especially when, you know, LibreOffice is a thing. And you also got to look at it this way is LibreOffice, or if you want something web-based that you pay for and you get support with, that's student pricing for um, Office Office. Yeah, Office uh, uh, 365, that's, mm -hmm. uh, even if you want the really expensive E3 license, well, I say really expensive, it's like a couple more dollars a month, but yeah, for like seven, I think it's seven pounds here for the E1 license, the base one, a month, if you really need that uh, Microsoft Office compatibility, that's probably the way to go. And let's let's face it, the only time you need that is when it's a work thing, and sometimes you got to pay the price yeah. for it, unfortunately. So mm -hmm. you've been talking about, nay, lusting after a Chromebook as of late. Oh, yes, I have. Uh, and I still, it goes on sale every now and then, and it immediately uh, sells out. I guess I'm not the only one, uh, but there was a bit of news earlier in the week that said that now you can run multiple Android apps at once on a Chromebook. And uh, I think it was the folks at Android Police that uh, had a little picture of it running on, I think it was an Acer Chromebook 15. And now the guys from Chrome Unboxed have basically, oh, there it is. That's the one. That's the video. And yeah, there you go. You have... a. Uh, bunch of games you have the clock uh running at the same time and it's not paused like you would get in a you know previously if you were running an android app all the other android apps would get paused the same way that they do on a regular phone tablet what have you but now you can actually use those uh android apps simultaneously which is pretty good and as if i didn't already have enough reasons to want a chromebook to you know play around like a toy with now there's this Hang no on. man i mean i definitely think it's kind of neat it's like chrome os is trying to really try to become a real boy a real boy and mm -hmm. a real operating system i do they do make a point though man they, they say it doesn't have a bizarre ui which if you were familiar no. with um cyanogen mod later lineage os there was an option to enable multi legitimate multitasking like four weird mm -hmm. windows of nope and that was the thing but this is really good because this is going to allow people to take advantage of the hardware on their chromebooks mm -hmm. you know that, that went up all right all right let's that, that, be fair unless unless you ended up getting one of those 200 hundred dollar chromebooks like the short bus versions for xmas because I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I got some bad news for you. Uh, whoever bought that for you, they don't love you. And um, <laughs> Or they don't really know what they're doing. Mm, we'll call them A, we'll call them B, man. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, no, that's cool. And now, now Google, where are my um, Android apps? On the browser. So I can watch Netflix or something <laughs> higher than 720p. On my Linux desktop. Yeah. That would be a great gift in 2018. Um, we're not done with Google Play and or apps no. just yet. No, we're not. Because someone had probably a little too many Android tablets lying about. And on one of those tablets, they had a terminal that they like to use a lot. And they said, you know what would be nice? If you could update your apps from the terminal. And, well... There it is. It's the G Play CLI, although the name is a bit misleading. It could, in theory, work with the Google Store, uh, but that's really up to our great overlords at Google whether or not they decide to nope that at some point. Well, you got to look at what this uh, thing's really focused for. I mean, this is an awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome piece of kit if you run your own F-Droid server. I mean, yes, it, it just is because I mean the main goal of this is to be able to just run the script from a cron job to just automatically mm -hmm. update F Droid, well your own F Droid server, and that's really cool if you want to keep track of version control and all that. And you, I mean F Droid's awesome, and 
This is a good way to yoink stuff, certain versions of things, and keep them in your own repo. It's the same as, you know, having your own PPA set up. Yep. And uh, he built this uh, with Python, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he says that the best way to install it is just to use pip3. So if you've ever dealt with any sort of Python building in really Python in general, just use pip. Pip is good. Pip's great because you can do pip install, try something out, and watch the mountain of dependencies and stuff it just yeah. wires in. <laughs> then you learn all the new commands to go dig them out when pip uninstall or remove doesn't work correctly, which I may have experienced that recently. Yep. Um, we got to talk about Vulcan rendering, but not for video games because mm-hmm. this is not a video game show, but nope. we, we're, we're talking about Vulcan rendering. That's confusing me, man. What's up? For video, it's just Vulcan rendering for video. So you probably heard about MPV. Everyone's going on about MPV lately. It's this really teeny tiny, really lightweight uh, video player. It's a media player in general. Uh, But the big thing is with the new release, they added Vulcan support. They also have some direct 3D11 support, but no one really cares about that. Vulcan support for your video player. How insane is that? And to be fair, my experience with uh, MPV has been mostly on like the lower end boxes, like the T42 ThinkPad, the netbook, because MPV is the only one that seems to be able to do hardware proper hardware decoding at whatever frame rate your video is, uh, is set to at 720p if you're doing 1080p. Good luck with that. Uh, but yeah, at 720p, it actually plays, even on the T42, 32-bit, running 32-bit puppy, uh, it runs 720p, 30, no issues whatsoever. Hmm. Yeah, I saw Steve-O. Um, was, yeah, Steve-O threw a comment in our show notes. Yeah. Was he uses it to watch LGC shows. I don't know what's wrong with you doing that, man. That's a, that, <laughs> that's a personal problem. Um <laughs> He said it makes 720p much better on his uh, UHD 2160p monitor. Um, I guess that's a use case. You know, I don't know why you would really need a Vulcan monitor. Vulcan monitor. See, my brain's twisted right now because it's like if you're running UHD, what are you running it on that just can't do it through software, really? Um, but I'm glad we have a Vulcan I mean, output. I that upscaling. Maybe if you're upscaling. Um, no, I'm glad this is a thing because I think you get a good point on lower end hardware. It's, uh, yep. you know, because I remember back in the days, back in the dark ages, dual core really wasn't a thing. And single core mm-hmm. AMD 720p video under Linux, sometimes you could get away with it. Mm-hmm. Other times you couldn't. And we're sometimes. Talking, and I mean, pegged 100%. <laughs> Then uh, VDPAU came out on the NVIDIA side, and later, what is uh, AMD's uh, version of? Uh, it's actually Intel's VA API. VA API, that's it. And that made life so much easier, and unless you're using VDPAU with VLC in 2018, because mm-hmm. there's a known bug that hasn't been fixed in like three years, and you need to fix that. Um, yeah. Speaking of the New Year's, man, Happy New Year 2018 from uh, mm. our fine friend over at OpenShot. Open oh, yeah. To which I'll just go, huh. <laughs> because, uh, you know, um, Herr Thomas uh, is talking about some of the cool things he's got planned for OpenShot. 2.x, 2.0, the latest and greatest nonlinear video editor for the internet and just some of his plans, what he's got going on. Now, a lot of people know that I, I for a long time, we're talking well over four years, open shot zealot. I was defending it. It's like, mm-hmm. this does what we needed to do, which it did. I wasn't, you know, the blind, like defending it, even with noticeable flaws. It's like, yes, it's very crash happy. And there's a lot of advanced features mm-hmm. missing. And that this is the one one four version, yeah, one point four, one point two, one point four, somewhere in there. Um, however, you've heard me say for well over a year that I could not honestly recommend any of the two two X versions. Period. Since inception up into where it's at now, because it, and I'm not being mean. I am just being very truthful in my personal experiences. It's still a hot, crashy mess, and that makes me really sad because. Linux really needs that simple, 
easy to use, call it my first video editor, and the 1X series of OpenShot was just that. It fit the bill. It did yep. what it said on the tin. You know, I got some video clips. I want to splice them together, maybe put some credits on the end, and I could take anyone from like, I don't know how to video edit, bro. Sit them down five minutes later and like, all right, I, I can figure this out. This is really logical. That I had a great UI. Um, the 2X series, I, I don't know where it's evolving to, but it does seem like it wants to be somewhere between like Windows Movie Maker of old and KD and Live. And that's kind of a niche mm -hmm. that doesn't really exist. But here's what we should yeah, say. No, there's really no need for that. No, uh, well, because. Uh, the Windows Movie Maker does just the basic thing of letting you have that timeline that you can line things up. That's it. You make mm -hmm. a video out of it. Boom, done. Uh, and then you have KDN Live, which is slightly more advanced and lets you do a hell of a lot more things. Uh, but it just really doesn't make any sense to have something in between those two. <laughs> I don't know, man. 2018... Some of the things they're going to be working on, stability, UI improvements, additional effects, and I'm not making this up, 32-bit Windows builds, because I don't even know what to say at this point. We've moved over begrudgingly, very begrudgingly, to KDN Live. I found it to be a solid piece of kit. It does what we need it to do. What's up next? Yeah. Up next, we have KDE saying, no, you don't get to run our text editors as root. Uh, it's not just the text, uh, the text editors, it's uh, uh, basically all of the K software suite. You can't really use it as root, and I can see the why behind it. And uh, Martin Graceland uh, actually said in a blog post that the problem with starting GUI, GUI applications as root is that X11 is extremely insecure, as available, and can, uh, it's considerably easy for another application to attack this. Okay. Fair enough. But there were a lot of people who were not happy about that. And as someone who has been stubbornly trying to make uh, Plasma 5, KDE 5, whatever you want to call it, uh, work properly over the past couple of months, I basically just resorted to the fact that I have to use either Get It or Genie. Because Get It has issues with some uh, encoding if your file is encoded in a certain... I don't know. Even Portuguese, if you have a lot of tildes and accents on letters, uh, get it, we'll just throw a hissy fit. It's a bug. They know about it. They say they will fix it in time. It remains to be seen. Uh, Genie, on the other hand, just everything is Unicode, basically, so it'll open just about anything. Uh, and, well, a lot of people were not happy about that. It caused a lot of uh, backlash because people were saying, I find this absolutely unacceptable and hope distributions will patch this nonsense out. <laughs> okay, that's a bit extreme. <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, sure, you are trying to uh, to edit a system uh, a root own file as a regular user. Yes, you probably like your GUI editor, be it get it or Kate or Kwrite, what have you. And now you can't use Kate or Kwrite. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, you're just eliciting a holy war anytime you do anything remotely <laughs> resembling this. Because I, yeah. I, I didn't even go try to track down where that holy war was taking place with this because I, I just had immediate flashbacks to when VLC switched where you could no longer run it as root. Mm -hmm. This was the thing, and most Qt applications do that now. Well, I mean, it's a smart thing to do. Uh, but this is yeah. way back when people were like screaming and forking, and we got to put that back in. And I, I know you, you don't need that. Now, uh, here's the thing, though. I mean, what, what's going to happen if I open up uh, VT and hit those files with Nano? Is it going to honey badger on me or what? Uh, that's fine. No. Yeah. No, that's, uh, you can still use any other text editor, even if you're using a GUI text editor in KDE, like Get It or Genie mm -hmm. or Leafpad, Mousepad, whichever one you prefer. Uh, it will still let you open them as root. It's specifically the KDE applications, the ones that rely on the KDE framework, that will not let you open as root. But there is something on the horizon, maybe, that Ma uh, Martin kind of hit it at, okay. which was the policy kit. If you are trying to edit a file that is in that has a you know a specific policy, 
for you to open it, you will be able to do it through Policy Kit using K using K right, but it's not in yet. So the takeaway from this is you can continue using any text editor that is spelled correctly to edit <laughs> with KDE. Um, yeah. Times, they are changing, and the Electronic Frontier Foundation mm -hmm. kind of rolled out, and they're like, hey, man, we've been tipping the scales on HTTPS 2017 in review. And this is just something I want to give a quick mention to because it is wicked easy to forget at the beginning of 2017, you didn't really expect every single web zone to support HTTPS. Now, 2017 comes to a close, you know, an average of 66% of page loads on Firefox are encrypted, and Chrome shows an even mm -hmm. higher number. And we can think a lot of that to Let's Encrypt. I mean, their total issuance volume has exceeded over 177 mm -hmm. million certificates. And the EFF points out, it is just getting easier and easier to roll that out too. Yeah, and uh, they there was that issue with Symantec and those two other uh, certificate authorities providing you know less than reputable websites with certificates, and both uh, Mozilla and Google were like, no, we're having none of that, and mm -hmm. they kind of curbed those. But yeah, Let's Encrypt is a thing, and you know. The, I guess the biggest thing, at least from the end user side of things, is that little exclamation mark or the red strike through on the um, the HTTP on your URL yes, bar. Yes, because on the left both corner. both Chrome and Firefox have basically said this web zone will murder eat your children in their sleep. Yeah, it, right. <laughs> it's like that's a big visual aid to let people know this is not secure. This is not a good thing for you. Do you think there's arguments now that it's effectively free to secure everything? Is there any legitimate arguments to saying not everything needs to be encrypted? Like, no. Okay. Unless you're a governmental authority uh, with a three letter acronym that would very much like your website to not be encrypted. I'm try <laughs> trying to think of a funny one, but I, I can't. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey man, that's the thing. Let's encrypt. It's been an awesome year for that, and it's we're going to get around to using it, but we kind of already paid for the Komodo certificate, and we got to get our money's mm -hmm. worth out of that. Um, so the big news, just kind of it, 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 this didn't. This has been our show notes for like two days, but oh yeah, um, it's kind of coming to a head today. Is uh something to do with branch predictions and this is some mm -hmm. fsm dang mm -hmm. interesting stuff and this is this is where i first read about it it might have been steve -O who originally put this in our discord to take a look at that uh potential intel note intel hardware bug could result mm -hmm. in a 30 to 35 percent performance hit and they've already rolled out patches to linux and NT kernels, which all the windows, uh, yep. this is, seems to be a problem with Intel's implementation of branch predictions. That's what it is. And it's just going to allow, how's a good way to put this? I kind of want to put it where it would be easy enough to understand without being... You have a process. That process has two kinds of memory. It has its own memory and it has a little bit of yeah. kernel memory. Because the process, if it's pulling something from either be it another process or hardware, it needs to access the kernel memory, even if it doesn't know about it, at least that's the goal here. It needs to access it so the kernel can go to the hardware or to the other process and say, yo, I need this. And then it relays that back to the original process. And that's where the issue becomes, because that uh, process memory is supposed to be completely separate from the kernel memory. And even though the process can access the kernel memory, it shouldn't be able to see what's actually in there. And, you know, kernel so memory, it holds... A good way to say it is it's effectively stuff. a nasty, potentially nasty memory leak. Yes, it is. Very much so. And uh, apparently, because of the way Intel does their memory mapping uh, and the branch prediction of what a process usually uses and what it would require from the kernel memory, 
That causes some issues because then the process can see what's happening inside the kernel memory. All right. That's and, bad. Well, we should point out that uh, kernel 4.14.11 is out with the patches for Intel CPUs and AMD, mm -hmm. even though you want to kind of disable them for AMD. We're going to get to that in a hot second. And uh, yeah, because if we scoot over to the kernel mailing list, uh, <laughs> our friend Tom... Um, from a PMTS software, well, he is the a software engineer at AMD. He's like, you know what? AMD mm -hmm. processors are not subject to the type of, to, yeah, this doesn't affect AMD <laughs> at all. And the reason yep. this response was is because the Intel engineers rolled out a, oh yeah, well, we need to patch this on AMD too. And you're potentially looking at, a lot of people think it's going to be IO, where you're going to see that up to 30%. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we, we, we need to be fair and share the performance hit across um, Intel and AMD. And Tom walked out. He's like, tap the brakes on that. Tap the brakes. Uh, no, no, just just you. Oh, and by the way, you might might want to go buy an AMD processor now because they're going to get expensive in a hot minute. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a apparently AMD is not uh, susceptible to this because they use a different way of mapping the kernel memory and the process memory to the virtual memory. So they're not um, vulnerable. And the fix, the issue, the big issue with the fix is that it would require the process memory to be completely and utterly separate from the kernel virtual memory, which would increase that latency time of accessing the kernel, then going to another process, then coming back. That's where the performance hit comes. And people, uh, some people did some tests, and with the fix, uh, Intel processors were anywhere between 7% and 21% slower than they were without the fix. So yeah, it stands to reason that an AMD uh, software person or CPU person would go, no, no, you don't have any reason to gimp the performance on our processors because Intel done goofed again. <laughs> this is true. I guess just to put a bow on this because I'm not going to be team red or team blue or anything like that. I don't like the whole tribal mentality stuff. And I don't personally believe in karma, but what you did to AMD in the early 2000s <laughs> I'm just saying, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I, I still don't even firmly believe that check's been cashed all the way. And so, I'm just, okay. That's the thing. Um, yeah, something, the past couple of months haven't been nice for Intel. This is true. <laughs> something you don't need the latest and greatest I, what the uh, X would have deleted ever to run will be um, Lisa OS, not Chrome OS, Lisa OS, not a Simpsons yep. character. The source code for Apple's historic Lisa OS to be made available in 2018. They just got to go through it and make sure there's no um, industry secrets in there for something that three people bought. But <laughs> hey, man, you know, I here's my thing. This is cool. Computer History Museum, they're going to get it. I personally look forward to running in a browser exactly one time saying, huh, neat, and never touching it again. Uh, be, but you, yeah. you immediately pedro in the notes is like xerox park brah xerox park they stole it yeah because i read the url i didn't even click through the article i read the url it's like is this the one that steve jobs just basically lifted a wholesale from xerox mm -hmm. yes yes it is <laughs> i see our theory and, uh, kind of making a joke in the previous uh, topic of arguing about xerox via's coming mm -hmm. back to x86 uh market do, oh yeah do a google news search on that Continue, sorry. But yeah, it's uh, this is the uh, basically the result of uh, Steve Jobs' quote unquote inspiration from when he went to see uh, the Xerox presentation of Park. And well, this is what people ran in their uh, in their original apples. Their Apple PCs, of course, uh, not a whole lot of people actually had one of those back then because they were like $10,000 in, you know, 1983 money. So, uh, yeah. Pedro, you're really cute because a brand new Mac Pro with a 5K screen maxed out is going to run you about $10,000 in 2018 money. Uh, no, max down is 20000 <laughs> Well, listen, yeah, man. Maxed out at twenty thousand. Still, I think this um, history-wise, it'll be fun to be able to 
for other people, not me, to dig around and just take a look at it and experience it. It For a lot of us, it's the only time we're ever going to be able to play with Lisa OS. You know, and mm -hmm. 20 seconds after it's released, people are going to make it too crazy. It, it's going to be running Doom, okay? It's, it's going to be running Doom. It's going to be running Vulcan. <laughs> so, before we get out of this, uh, like the last minute, Indiana Jones hat under mm -hmm. the door. Uh, System 76 kind of slid in and threw us a curveball. And I was like, wait a minute. I know it's not April Fool's Day, System 76, because the date just changed. <laughs> But I checked it anyway because what I read on their Twitter was uh, we heard and listened. We now accept Bitcoins with less than two days left of steep discounts. Yes, uh, start 2018 right. Cuddle with your doge and fave machine. Um, hello, System76 now accepts Bitcoins. Huh. Um, okay. Sure. I mean, Valve tried the Bitcoin thing and they said, you know what? No. Uh, and now after that, System76 goes, oh, no, we'll take it. Yeah. Hmm. I. Oh, oh okay. Uh, this... I don't. I mean, it's probably great for System76. They're bound to sell a ton of systems to coin miners who want a laptop, I guess. Uh, well, there's going to be a lot of people sitting with um, some jingle jingle of bitcoins, and you know they've lost a little bit of a value because we have a very small we mm -hmm. we have like 17 MBTC, and it, it has gone everywhere from like seventy dollars to three hundred dollars in the past few months. Um, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people sitting with that, looking for a legitimate way to convert that into a new PC, which going to be honest with you a lot of people are going to order that because they're like hey this is a reputable company and i don't have to worry about frank's um, exchange of rama and then they're going to put windows on it yeah yeah that's probably going to be the result of most of them <laughs> but hey if system 76 can get more money and they can keep on improving mm -hmm pop bang and there's core os uh, uh and just you know linux support for out-of-the-box systems yeah sure why not yeah <laughs> and uh yeah Kanye west man um 100 mm -hmm. so <laughs> if if you don't blow all your bitcoin at system 76 we don't blame you if you do you, you can come blow some bitcoin over at uh, linuxgamecast.com by tapping that support button and supporting this show help us out covering the bandwidth and expenses to run this nightmare fuel and it's not just this it's the other four days of the week we stream and try to bring just mm -hmm. a little bit of happiness to you during the week and we're thinking about definitely adding some more a couple of ways to do that patreon we love you for that bunch of amazon affiliate links we got the amazon um referral oh and the wish list new egg and this is new. This is new, Pedro. What we're seeing right here. What is this? This is kind of yes, it why, is. why do we have? Why? Why? Why is there a pixelated heart on our web zone? I'm scared now. Because a humble bundle said, you know what? There's a lot of people uh, who keep talking about our bundles whenever we throw out a new one. A lot of press people. I guess we technically count as press for some reason. Uh, and over on that uh, Saturday show, what we do, we talk a lot about Linux games. And there was a time that humble usually meant. Linux games. Whenever a new bundle was out, oh, more Linux games. That's not the case so much anymore. Sure, the humble indie bundles before any of the purists get up on my business. Uh, the humble indie bundles still support Linux, and they're still DRM-free and all that, except for Gianna Sisters. I still haven't forgotten. Um, but yeah, uh, they opened up the partner program to just about everyone who could apply and if uh, their i'm assuming their minimal checks went you actually went through the process then you probably uh will be able to you know shed some light on that yeah uh, <laughs> not a whole lot but te some. technically <laughs> they own you now so <laughs> oh okay <laughs> it's one of those license I, agreements all right <laughs> prices were paid but um yes yeah, devo you, you just click on that we got a referral link it's kind of brilliant. Uh, we, we thank you all the thanks for that. And But we do want to thank uh, Patreon is really the best way. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You guys are making that possible. 
and you can get stuff back, access oh, yeah. to our Discord, early note access, get your name in the credits. That's kind of neat. Uh, you get all of our uncut uh, VODs three days early. Uh, you get to reserve spots for things like uh, Meet the Freelance, which we played last night. It was uh, like watching Groundhog Day. It took us over an hour to beat a lover. <laughs> and there's even a role on Patreon that you could tell the world that you are fiscally irresponsible. No one has yet to take us up on that one. But we have a new patron, because we're going to talk about you because we love you, uh, mm-hmm. that joined this week. And that is Luke, not not Skywalker, Pedro, but Luke W. What do you think the W is for? Ooh. Walker? Walker? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's not Luke Skywalker. It's just Luke Walker. Luke, uh, just... <laughs> Luke Warm? <laughs> That's just mean, man. Luke is not that. Well, maybe Luke is warm. Maybe that's it. I don't know. That that may, Luke is warm. Luke is a warm, caring person. Is what you're trying to say? <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, sure. Everyone, welcome our latest patron. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah. let's get into this slice of pie. Okay, that's a slice of pizza pie and pie. Uh, and well, let's say you have a raspberry pie or you're thinking of getting one, but you don't like just a bread uh, breadboard look to it and you actually want to put a case and some maybe some, you know, heat sinks. Maybe look at make it look nice so you can put it beneath your TV and just make it you know, gel better with the environment that you have. Well, uh, the fine folks at PC World actually put together a list of all the basic kits that you can get that include like a case, some heat sinks, power adapters, uh, SD cards, controllers, uh, uh, laptop shells. Cardboard boxes. Uh, you have the uh, Google, yeah, the Google AIY kit, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but I was looking through this, and yes, uh, I will agree with you, Ven, that Pi Desktop box looks very nice. Well, no, I saw that Pi Top. The Pi Top it looks like it would turn into a slick looking. Oh, the looking, laptop one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, slick looking little pilot. It's like, I, it's like something I would care. Listen, I, look at the goofy stuff I wear. I, I'm not the fashion person, <laughs> but I think it looks quite <laughs> slick. Um, but that price don't. It's like 200 watt stinky cash. Yeah. Like, oh, however. I didn't even know that exists, I assumed. Maybe I should have. The um, Pie for Dummies. I I haven't done it yet, mm-hmm. but probably this afternoon. I'm going to order a few of those for the local uh, nonprofit that I'm on the board of. And that's just going to be like, I'm going to buy you guys some stuff. Because that looks like a very back in my day, Pedro. <laughs> you might want to <laughs> pour yourself a drink. Um, we had radio kits you know, to build... Uh, Mm-hmm. stuff like that and we, CB radios. yeah and mm-hmm. I, I want the youth to be able to electrocute themselves equally i mean that shouldn't mm-hmm. be restricted to just my generation or I, i'm sure you had little gadgetron things like that in school and i mostly took apart uh like toys i had at home my dad <laughs> Kept giving me crap because I, whenever I got a new electronic toy, the first thing I did was grab the screwdriver and take it apart. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, but yeah, on. actually, looking looking at this list, uh, one thing that jumped out at me was the retro gaming kit, which is a 65 pound um, priced little kit that comes with two SNES style controllers, a 16 gig uh, micro SD, and a micro SD adapter. An HDMI cable, the uh, micro USB, and the wall socket power adapter with all of the plugs for wherever you live, and the Pi case and the Pi itself for sixty-five pounds. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. That's way far more reasonable a price than you usually expect for expect for this kind of stuff. But why would you want to corrupt the youth with gaming and the gyrating <laughs> hips? With their rock and roll music, <laughs> it's, it's just wrong. Now. Well, uh, you don't really get to corrupt them because uh, the SD card does not come preloaded with an OS. You have to do that yourself. Use Laka. It sets up Samba so you can just over the network load all the games that you possibly want on it. Uh, but yeah, two controllers and the Pi and the case and everything else for sixty-five pounds. Yeah, it's pretty good. 
<laughs> right on. And if you know some uh, cool things that you can do with the pie, and that's reasonably safe for work, and we can mention on the show, write us and let us know about them. How can they do that? Mm-hmm. Well, they can do that by going to linuxgamecast.com and you hit the uh, lovely, lovely contact button on the nav bar and then you fill out the forum. Just make sure to pick LWDW from the little drop down thing. You can also leave some hate mail for that Saturday show, What We Do, or some relationship advice for Jordan. But here, we are looking for your feedback. Did we say anything inaccurate? Would you say, would you have anything to add to anything we talked about this week? Well, LWDW, fill out the form. It's pretty easy. But we this week, we have, uh, indeed, uh, we have the one bit of feedback, which comes from Rapid Ski. Hey, man, and, I, uh, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm surprised we got this because it's like the beginning of the new year. You know, I was like, all right, uh, yeah. listen, we, in case you're at home, there was one, two, two, three other pieces of didn't really they fit the very minimum requirements for but i wrote everyone back so you'll at least get written back but Mm -hmm. uh, i felt i needed to say that yeah so uh rapid ski apparently uh spent like christmas and new years with the family and decided to install linux on one of their computers and he says want to replace my grandpa's vista machine with something from this decade any suggestions on a particular distribution this will be remotely managed. Thanks, Rapitsky. And, mm. well, all I can say is something that you know. Since you're the one who's going to be managing it, something that you know. Make your life easier. Arch. Arch. Use Arch. Possibly Gentoo. <laughs> if the Arch is I said question. easier. <laughs> if you want your grandpa to call you every day, uh, yeah, by all means, use Arch. Uh, <laughs> Come on, Arch is about the most simple, <laughs> rudimentary Linux distribution out there. Um, you just follow the wiki, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, usually the best choice is uh, something that has that familiar-looking UI, especially since it's your grandpa. Uh, some A familiar-looking UI, so like Ubuntu Mate. Uh, uh, did you see the news? It didn't make it into the show, but... Um, Linspire, formerly Lindos, is back from the dead, apparently, they with yes. new versions. Yes, it is. So, okay, if this is like the side of the grandpa on that side of the family that you don't like, um, <laughs> just say, if it's that kind of grandpa, yeah. <laughs> maybe he didn't, he, he got you GoBots instead of Transformers when you were a kid. You, you throw him some love back in his, um, old age really you can put anything you want on it just lock it you can do this with a windows box lock it down don't let them have yeah. any permissions a lot easier to do a linux box mind you and um mm-hmm. you th- th- they will tucker themselves out i mean the first two weeks it's going to be rough because you're going to get those if you're lucky they're going to send you texts. How do I do this? Well, they're going to like, where's this password <laughs> thing keep coming up? And he's like, nope, you can't install that. Well, how do I? Nope, you can't install that. So you don't end up with what I like to call the elderly bar is you've all opened that Internet Explorer or that Chrome or that Firefox. Yeah. And it's like five <laughs> levels deep of just, you know what? Like and, and adware toolbars. <laughs> install all the things. Got to make it. Just once they figure out, when, once you defeat them, to where they can't install anything, and um, if they need mm-hmm. something installed, you can do it. You can do it remotely. Basically, anything Linux is going to work for that. I mean, set it to auto update. Probably don't use Arch because that's a little YOLO for Grandpa. And there's also the very real mm-hmm. chance that an update will hose the box too. Um, not to an unrecoverable <laughs> state, but maybe not something you want to be trying to fix remotely. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to do it for this week. Indeed. I think that about wraps us up. Remember, throw some feedback, throw some suggestions, mm. throw whatever you want at us, and we will 
be more than happy to oblige. Mm. Mm. I am Pedro Batoz. You can find me at, at Accounted For on Twitter. There's a little thingy down there. Uh, or plus Pedro Batoz on Google+. Plus. I'm Vin Stone. At Vin Stone. Vin Stone at the Googles. Me, me and Pedro had this conversation. Pedro was Googling himself one time. Then I hear him type in Vin Stone. He goes, mm. oh. I was like, yeah. Been on my <laughs> um, I'm now the first result too. <laughs> yep. Next week, Pedro. What happened? <laughs> Pedro's not going to be here next week. Uh, Jill's going to be joining us. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Jill. It's going to be an adventure. Thanks everyone for making this possible. Beginning of the year, if you've been thinking about kicking us some shekels, help support this. Let us do more. We got some plans for 2018. Consider doing that. Love you. Now, time mm-hmm. for some credits. Oh yes. Ooh. It will be music. Yeah, it's uh Intel Intel really screwed the pooch with this one. <laughs> mm. <laughs> As I was saying, I would not want to be like even like six Kevin Bacon's removed from anything near the team that has to deal with that. <laughs> it's like nope. It's First it was Coffee Lake, then it was uh, the management engine, then Ryzen turned out to be pretty competitive, and now this? It's not a good year to be Intel. No, not at all. Nope, no sir, don't like it.